Today at Speedy's Garage, we're gonna have the final installment of the Quincy Air Compressor System, where we install the Max Line Kit from Rapid Air to distribute air around the shop. And we went with the M7500 three quarter inch kit. I don't know if that was the right thing to do or not. I've had to buy a lot of extra fittings and whatnot to make it all work. Um, but in my mind, the, the bigger the better in terms of airflow. I didn't wanna ever have to worry about airflow if I went to a blasting cabinet or something like that in the future. So I went with the three quarter kit and we'll just have to make it work. The kit's pretty complete. It comes with instructions. Uh, it comes with three wall mounts for the uh, air fittings. I left one disassembled because they come with the drain, a plug for the back. Drain goes on the bottom, obviously. Um, you get three of these three quarter pipe to half inch NPT adapters and that's to get into the block. It came with two T's for your drops, 20 plastic clips to hold the pipe to the wall, a burring tool, and I think it said to use the number 25, which is what that one is, a pipe cutter. But honestly, I didn't want to wear myself out with this thing. I wasn't sure how hard the pipe was going to be to cut. So I'm actually probably going to use this guy. It's just a small pipe cutter that I've had. Um, getting a little reflection off the table there, that's better. So I'm going to probably use that. Came with some extra O-rings. And of course, the 100 feet of three quarter max line. And what's unique about this stuff is it's vinyl coated on the outside and the inside. And it has a aluminum insert. I don't know if you can see that or not. Try to get closer. There you go. You can see the aluminum there. And so what that means is this pipe will run very straight. You can straighten it out and it should hold its shape. And uh, being OCD, I just couldn't deal with something that was crooked. Now I picked up several extra parts. I didn't want to get into this project and have any problems. I have to make 15 trips to the store to pick up anything extra. Uh, the first thing I picked up was a three-quarter regulator. Rapid Air was the only one I could find that was actually three-quarter connections rather than half inch. And that gets back to what I was saying earlier. I went with the three-quarter kit. Um, in the end, I'll give my impressions and, and what I think of the three-quarter versus half. But uh, in my mind, 50% more capacity was a good thing. I picked up a couple of extra bags of clips. The kit came with 20, and they say to place them, I think, every five feet. I thought I might want them closer than that, potentially every 32 inches, which is what my studs would be if I skipped every other one, uh, 16 inch on center. So I picked up extras. Uh, anything I don't use, obviously I can return. I picked up an extra T for an extra drop. Um, also picked up an extra uh, three quarter to half inch adapter, and that's to get to a hose reel. And to get that down to quarter inch, which is what the hose reel has, I had to get another reducer that goes from half inch to quarter, and then a quarter inch, um, I forget what they call this thing, like a flare or something like that, I don't know. Somebody will correct me on YouTube and tell me what it is. But anyway, that's to connect the air hose uh, that's quarter inch to the three quarter inch air line. I wasn't sure how I was gonna run around corners. Um, if I can bend the pipe and make it nice and neat and a nice radius, then I won't need these. They're 17 bucks a piece. So you're looking at almost $100 with just these five uh, elbows. I'm hoping I won't need them, but if I can't make the pipe nice and pretty, this is what I'm going to use. I picked up three quarter inch quick connects, and these are the ones that are spring loaded, so when you plug in, they snap shut. I like those, and these were from Home Depot. They already have the uh, uh, stuff on them to make it seal. I had to pick up some reducers because the blocks are half inch threaded NPT. Um, Rapid Air, I guess, assumes if you get the three quarter inch pipe, you're going to be working in a diesel shop or something and have great big airlines and tools. So these go from half to quarter, so that way I can hook these guys up. I didn't want the connections to stick straight out of the wall and get hit and knocked around. So I picked up some 45 degree angle, and those will kind of go like that, kind of keep them closer to the wall. So I picked up three of those. There is my uh, hose reel that I picked up and if you pay attention you can catch these things on Black Friday or other sales pretty cheap um, I like this hybrid hose. It's a it's a mixture between rubber and PVC The rubber ones I've had in the past have cracked and popped and everything else the PVC ones look a little chintzy to me This is 3 8 it's hybrid. It's lightweight seems to flow good air. I've got one of these in the uh, 
uh, other garage that I've used quite a bit and very happy with it. The only downside is Cobalt includes a whip hose to connect it up to your compressor or whatever else the case may be. The problem is the threads on the end, they're both right-handed thread. So when you're trying to tighten the hose into the hose reel, you can't also tighten it into your compressor or whatever else you have. I don't know why they did that. It seems like a waste of money to, to include this. And again, if I'm missing something, leave me a comment and let me know. Um, but I, I couldn't even find a ball joint to put on the end that was reasonably priced. They were like 20 or 30 bucks um, to, make that, to make this hose actually work. So what I did is for $15, I found this Flexzilla hose. It's 3 8 On one end, it's fixed. So there's your 3 8 connection. And on the other end, it's a ball joint. So as you can see, that can spin independently of the hose, meaning you can tighten it. Picked up a couple of lag bolts to mount the hose reel to a stud. And that'll get us going. You're gonna need some Teflon tape. Rapid Air specifies that you do two wraps of Teflon tape on any threaded connection, as well as some pipe sealant. Uh, this is more of a lubricant, I think, in their case to keep the threads from galling. If they say use it, I'm gonna use it. I don't want any leaks. You're gonna need a couple of large wrenches. The connections, this guy is an inch and three eighths. This nut is an inch and one sixteenth. I'm gonna be using these crescent wrenches for that. You're also gonna need a nine millimeter hex, and that's for the cap in the back of the blocks. Three eighths wrench, obviously. A 13, I'm sorry, a 21 millimeter, and that is for this guy, your drain valve. See how that works, you can flip it up. Now you're letting your water out if it collects any moisture. Flip it back down, it's sealed off. I'm gonna use a stud finder so that I can get to the studs. You need a Sharpie to mark your compression fittings. So what you wanna do, you insert this guy into the hose, you mark it, there's a bushing in there which I'll show you in a second, and then you put your compression nut on there and you wanna tighten it about another turn once it seats to make that compression uh, fitting solid and you won't get any leaks. I'm gonna use my DeWalt drill to seat my number 10 self-drilling screws and I got the self-drilling ones so that I didn't have to pre-drill the studs for these. These will just go right in. Um, I'm gonna use sheetrock screws because that's what I had on hand. Any screw will work and these are for the clips to clip the uh, pipe to the wall. These are gonna be for the distribution blocks. So you've got four holes in there. Unfortunately, they made these distribution blocks about a quarter inch too wide to fit on a two by four or two by six in my case. I've got two by sixes in the, in the walls of the shop. But either way, they're, they're just a little bit too wide. So what I'm gonna do is line it up so that at least two of these go into a stud and then I'll use uh, sheetrock anchors on the other two. Requires some tedious measuring, but it's only three of them, won't take too long. And then you're gonna need your uh, adapter and your Phillips head screw uh, driver bit for your drill, as well as a 5 16 and socket adapter. Uh, that's for the screws, the sheetrock screws for the clips and the number 10 self-drilling screws for the blocks. And I've got 12 foot ceilings in the shop, so I'm gonna need a pretty tall A-frame ladder to get mine done. One of the biggest complaints about this Rapid Air Max line is straightening it out. Once you get it straight, it'll hold its shape, but getting it there seems to be a bit of a challenge, and I didn't really wanna to have to fight with so it. So I did some checking online, and I found that there was a jig that you could make that would allow you to feed the uh, Max line through it and it would straighten it out perfectly straight for you. All you do is use some C-clamps to secure this to a heavy object and just feed the pipe through it and you get nice straight pipe. I wish I could say that I built this one myself. I did not. I found a guy on one of the garage forums um, that had done his shop recently and didn't need this anymore so I just bought it from him and when I get done with it, I'll sell it on to someone else so they can use it. And this is how your compression fittings work for the Maxline pipe. You slide your nut and your compression fitting over your pipe. You plug this into your pipe. You see you've got O-rings here. Then you slide this back up over the pipe 
and the fitting. And when you tighten this, it compresses your compression fitting or bushing here, causing an airtight seal. In order to get the fittings as tight as they need to be on your distribution blocks, you're probably going to need access to a vise. Just be sure you're protecting the block because it is soft aluminum with some kind of padding. And I've got that pretty tight. I'm turning it just little by little until I've got it lined up straight. And that ought to do it. And like most things I've done in the shop, I created a detailed diagram to follow for the install and the layout. And this was to make sure I didn't waste money on parts I didn't need. <clears throat> and as you can see by the red, I've even made a couple of adjustments after the fact. Originally, I was going to run the pipe all the way up to the ceiling, but I got to thinking, you know, I'm really kind of wasting some length here um, if I run it at the edge of the ceiling. So if I dropped it down two feet, I would save two feet on each one of the drops and it would give me the ability to run this drop to the front of the shop. And that way, if I need to go out of the shop with the air hose, I've got a little bit of extra reach. I also decided not to mount the hose reel from the ceiling. Again, it's 12 feet in the air. So I decided to come back and change that and make one of those drops connect to the hose reel. I'll make the third drop come down somewhere along this wall because this is where I intend to have a workbench. And that way I've got the hose reel on one side, I've got a, a quick connect on the other, and the lift eventually will be right here as well, so I could potentially run two air tools. And based on the layout, I was able to come up with a very detailed parts list, and I think the only thing I really had to add was the three-quarter to half-inch reducer from the pipe for the hose reel, and then the brass half-inch to quarter reducer with the nipple to get to the hose reel whip hose. I did a diagram like this, and one square is one foot. That way I knew exactly how many feet I was gonna use. Uh, the kit comes with 100 feet, so I knew I had to stay within that unless I wanted to buy extra, which I don't. I'm hopeful I can make the radiuses nice and even, just like I have in this diagram, and I'll use up about six inches of space, and they'll look good as well. We'll have to see how that goes. I've got a couple of ideas I'm gonna try out. And my idea is to use these weights to shape those radiuses. I would love for it to be this size. I think that's gonna measure right about six inches. Uh, that would be just about perfect if I can make the pipe bend around that nice and even without kinking. If it gives me any trouble, I'll go to this one, which I believe is eight inches. Um, not ideal, but still will work well if I can make it happen. And the pipe straightener tool works pretty good. You just use a, on this one, it's a 9 16 wrench and acts like a press. And as you tighten these, it clamps down on the pipe, and as you feed it, it just straightens it out. That'll make the job much quicker. And the idea with the weights as a, a die to kind of shape the pipe worked out really well. It helps you get your bends nice and, uh, nice and straight, and it, doesn't, it prevents the pipe from kinking. So once you have the pipe cut, use your auger to go in and it uses those blades on it. I think you can see those. And it basically chamfers the pipe, getting it ready for uh, the bushings. And here's the compression fittings or the ferrule. The nut would go on first, followed by the ferrule. And that's how you make your compression fitting on the other side. As I mentioned before, this is a one and three eighths, and this is a one and one sixteenth inch bolt size so I used uh, crescent wrenches for it and you want to finger tighten the bolt side or the nut side rather and put a witness mark on both the nut and the bolt and the instructions indicate that you're supposed to after this is finger tight turn it three quarters of a turn minimum or until tight and that's where you stop you don't want to over tighten this and cause a leak The actual install was relatively easy. It just took quite a bit of time because we were so careful to measure four times and cut once and not waste any of the pipe. So I don't want to bore you with all the details of us putting pipe on the wall. So we'll speed it up a little bit.
This last run ended up being the most difficult because we tried to do it as a single piece. In the end, we threw in the towel and used one of the 90 degree elbows to make it more manageable and got it done. And this is how the chamfer works. You can see how it kind of makes that so that the ends slide together nice. As I mentioned, the distribution blocks, the holes in them are just a little bit wider than a, a standard stud. So I made sure that the first two on the right hand side would line up with the stud in the wall and then I just used some sheetrock anchors for the other two. Once you've run all the airlines and built your distribution blocks, go ahead and install your fittings. And like I said, I did the uh, 45 degree elbows. I had to find these online. They were a little bit hard to find. I ordered them uh, from a website and they got here in a couple of days. And I did the same process. I put some of that pipe dope on the threads to seal it up good. So now I mounted the hose reel and it's pretty straightforward. You find the stud, uh, put your three lag bolts in, make sure it's level. And here you can see what I was talking about with that original uh, whip hose that came with this hose reel. Um, you see how this has to turn in order to get tightened. And it has to turn independently of the hose itself. And so I'm not sure if I'm just missing something or what, but I don't know how you could do this with the whip hose they included with this reel. And that's a wrap on this project. Like I said, I'll have a workbench right in this area eventually. So I'll have the hose reel on that side, the quick connect on this side. There'll be a lift in here. That's where the recess in the ceiling is. So when the lift goes in, that's the reason I put the hose reel on this side because when the car's in the air, I'll be more likely to need air on this side of the shop. And I can also run two air tools simultaneously uh, to save time on the work as well. Was able to make the bend in that corner no problem. I didn't need an elbow. I did need one down on that long run on that end. I have another air drop by the workbench back here. That's for when I'm doing work on this workbench. I always try to put the air where I thought it would be working the most. And then it just runs down this wall. The front of the shop. And on this one I had to dog leg it just a little bit. These blocks, like I showed you before, would not line up perfectly with a stud. So I, I basically hit these two bolts on a stud, these two are in drywall anchors. But on this one, because I needed the clips to hit a stud, I had to dog leg that pipe just a little bit. And I also tried to keep in mind keeping this thing out of the way of the light switch as I come in and out of the shop. Didn't want to mess with that. So that's why I put that one just a little bit higher. All the rest of them line up even with a, with a light switch panel. Like I said, Max Line says to put about 50, or Rapid Air rather, says to put about 50 PSI in the lines and listen for leaks as a test. So far so good. As one final test, I set the regulator to 100 PSI, then I shut off the air supply from the air compressor. I did this to check to see how long the lines would actually hold air pressure. And with 100 PSI on the system, it actually bled down to about 60 PSI, and that took about five hours. So I think that's a reasonable rate of pressure loss given the complexity of the system. And I seriously doubt there would be any way to guarantee absolutely no pressure loss on a system of this nature. Finally, you want to set your air regulator up at a pressure that will allow the tool to maintain at least 90 PSI, but not over about 100 to 105 PSI during use. That's the key word there is during use. So to test mine, I'm going to use this half inch impact which is a pretty large draw on the air system. And when I'm running it, I'm gonna make sure the air pressure doesn't drop below 90. And I think 105 is probably gonna be the sweet spot for me. So as you saw, it never dropped below about 100. The tool sounds happy, so that's where we're gonna leave it. And these are the parts I had left after installing the system. I had about five or six feet of the pipe. So that means we came pretty close with our calculations at 100 feet. Um, that's exactly what I tried to do. Four of the elbows are left. I ended up using one up in the top corner there. You can kind of see it. We probably could have run a single piece of pipe 
but getting the bend in the pipe and then actually getting the pipe installed on the wall without it kinking being such a long single run I felt it was easier to do it in two pieces I also ended up not needing either uh, extra bag of clips so I can return all of those and uh, save a little bit of money so that's the air system I chose for the shop and I'm real happy with the way it turned out it looks nice it was easy to install and was cost effective if I had it to do over again, I would probably just get the half inch max line kit rather than the three quarter and avoid having to get all the extra reducers and fittings to reduce it down to fit my air tools. If you'd like to see some more how to, visit my website, www.speediesgarage.net or just hit subscribe in the bottom right corner. Hey baby.